Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. I hope you joined us on our stream last night. We had great fun in the game Chance of Sinar, trying to get as much done as we can. There's a bit of controversy developing about whether we should go back and finish past regions before trying to get information about new ones. Um, <laughs> You can look at that either way. Um, anyway, we had a good time and it sounded like everybody in chat had a good time as well. So it was good fun. Um, and this, you can watch the video of that stream and you can join us next week when I'm sure we'll do it again. Um, although with Christmas diaries being what they are, we may have to be a bit careful about which day. Don't think we've decided that yet. Anyway, that was last night. Um, of course, there's also Wordle in a Minute videos. Tomorrow there'll be Simon, no, not tomorrow. The next day there'll be Simon's Friday crossword stream at some point this month. I will have a go at the November Club Monthly Special. That'll be on Patreon. Already on Patreon we have our uh, Snack Doku Patreon reward. That's proving incredibly popular. Um, and then we've got all kinds of apps available and loads going on basically around the channel all the time. Do check out all the links under the video, Spencer Doka Pad and our merchandise, but the first link is to this puzzle. Now, I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing here, which is a flask in a chemistry lab. And the puzzle is called Chemistry is Like a Puzzle, dot, dot, dot. This is by Samantha. Um, formerly known as Samantha Mukherjee, um, and sometimes known as ANU. But uh, he has been a brilliant constructor for a long time, featured on the channel, I would say, over 20 times. And uh, here's another one. I love the sort of bubbling flask. Um, I slightly changed the colors because of our palette and for clarity. And anyway, the green and yellow colors here don't matter at all. They are just for show. Basically, we're looking at the line, the thermos, and the dots. Um, and I'm going to go through the rules now. Normal Sudoku rules apply. We're putting one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. The purple line, it's not a Renban line this time. It's far too long to be one of those. It's an entropy line. Any set of three sequential cells along one of these entropic lines must contain a low digit, which is one, two, or three, a middle e digit, four, five, or six, and a high digit, seven, eight, or nine. Now, we've also got thermometers. Digits on a thermometer must strictly increase from the bulb. And that is obviously, I don't know what the stirrer in a chemistry lab is called, but that's what this is. The, I remember those glass stirrers that you would stir the mixtures with. Um, a white circle joins two consecutive digits. The black circle joins digits with a one to two ratio. One of them is half the other. Uh, as I said, cell shading is just for aesthetics and that is a fascinating construction. Do give it a try on the link under the video. I am gonna start now, see what we find. Let's get cracking. So I'm gonna start. How long is this thermo? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's only seven. Two degrees of freedom on that. Is that right? Yes, it is, because it starts in the second cell and it doesn't go all the way. Five, six, seven. So, good lift your thermos. Right, then we get seven, eight, or nine on a white dot. This one, therefore, is also quite high. Six, seven, eight, or nine. Now, at some point very soon, I'm going to have to start thinking about the entropic line. And I think that point probably comes now. And I'm immediately putting it off by thinking about this dot and whether these three have to be different digits. Right, I'm done thinking about that. Let's start with this cell, which is on the entropic line and is either low or middly. One might say the odds are quite good that it's low because that would give freedom to the rest of the thermo. However, one of these is high, we know that. Okay, one thing we can mark along these, I think given the colors in the grid, I'll use letters, but every third cell has to be in the same category of, or the same polarity, let's call it, on an entropic line. 
Let's use letters. That's my plan. We'll call those um, A. We'll call the next one along B. Now, I will explain in a moment why we know that every third cell has to be one of those. And it's, it's sort of because whatever these two are, B and C, they have to be complemented by an A for those three cells and an A for those three cells. So you always have to have this alternation of polarity along the line. That is a very long phrase, alternation of polarity, for a very simple concept. But I hope you follow me there. Now, now if those two were both high, that's quite interesting. Let's say this wasn't a six. Those two would both be from seven, eight, nine. Then B and C couldn't be high because there would be four highs in the same box. There can clearly only be three. So if those two were both high, if that wasn't a six, I say it again, then A is high. And A is not high from there. There we go. Bingo. So we're in. That is the break-in. That's brilliant. Okay, I'm, it's kind of linear because I don't see where else you would really look at this point. Anyway, that has worked beautifully. This is a six. That must be a seven. That's going to run all the way up the thermo. And now we're going to know all sorts of things already. So A's are lows, one, two, three. That one, look, we've got a one, two, three triple in column three already. Um, just as it would have been very informative for those three to be high, now it's far less informative that two of, that's high, that's middly, and that's low. That's not what we wanted at all. Well, hang on. High, low, and middly there, A, B, and C. B and C, B and C, these two are both A's. Yes, they're from one, two, three. So again, we've got a triple here as well. Now we don't know about B and C yet. I don't think we've come across learning how they're made up. However, oh no, I thought that was a black dot. It's a white dot. Um, that can't have a 1 on it, and I don't think the fact that there can only be 1A actually does anything to it either. Right, let's look at this. This is clearly two middly or high digits, or one of each. Okay, somewhere on these dots there is a low digit. Now that means this is either 2, 4, or 3, well, either this is 2, 4, or 3, 6, or this is 3, 4. This can't be 3, 4. Right, where is the third A in this box? It's a very simple question. It's got a very simple answer. Those are three A's, so not there. Those are A's, and these are all marked up. There is one A here, and only one A. So this is either 2, 4, or 3, 6. One of these A's is definitely a 1. <clears throat> mm, okay, that didn't get me much further. These have a 2 on, because they're either 1, 2, or 2, 3, so that's not a 2 either. Remember that A, B, and C don't remember individual digits. They just reset. They just represent the polarity group. Now, what do we do next? We, we've made a nice, a nice break in. We need to do something different next. The little thermos don't seem very helpful to me. Um, If that was a 3-6 pair, that would be 1 and that would be 2. This would be 3 and that would be 2. That would be 2. This would be 1. Oh, that, look, I've got a 3 looking straight at that. And there we go. It's just scanning. Often a problem for anybody. It's the sort of thing that if you can see it while you're watching me solve, it seems totally obvious and you go, oh, his scanning's useless. But if you're doing the puzzle yourself, it's quite easy to miss. 
Um, right, now there's no three there. This is, we're away. That's a two, four pair. That's a one. There is a two somewhere here. It's not going to be there because you can't put one on the bulb. Now, what do we know what that is? No, but we know there is a one in one of those two cells. Now, this doesn't have one, two, three, or four on it. Is four the next interesting digit? I don't know. I don't know whether we're meant to focus next on... Ah, one of these is a one. Okay, that's quite interesting. By Sudoku, it can't be there because you can't put the two above it. One of these is a two, and that takes two out of that cell and puts it on the thermo, where it's going to do nothing for the rest of the puzzle. Um, now, that can't be a two because of the two in one of these cells. One of these three is a two. It's not a C, and it can't go there because... Yes, it can. No, it can't go there by that. It can't go there because that can't be one. So that's a two. And that fixes one in this box. And that puts one in one of these cells. Yeah, okay, that's not bad. Now, this can't have one, two, four, or five on it. Um, now, these whites, they're, they're quite interesting. What else can we learn from them? Oh, this is quite interesting. There's two C's in row seven here. So, if C was high. C is either middly or high. If it was high, then these would have to all be low or middly. Okay, maybe that doesn't tell me anything. Ah, oh, there's a four in one of those cells, so none of these can be four. So we must get a four in box four in one of those positions. Then four is in one of these positions and don't really have any information. Still haven't disambiguated C and B at all. This white dot pair, nothing has happened for that particularly either. I think I've just said particularly too often. There's a two somewhere there. That can't be a two, because that can't be a one or a three. So one of those is a two. Can we elim eliminate? Well, we can't eliminate one at all, but it's in one of those three cells. We can pencil mark it. Hmm. I don't quite know what to look at next. Right. Um, six, one, one, three, two, four. This white dot. Six can't be in those. I, said, I don't know. That's not. That's not getting me anywhere either. Maybe it's something more about these white dots. Okay, I'm going to say that these white dot cells, one of them is low. None of the others are low. That's quite interesting. None of them can be a two because of that, for instance. And none of them can be a three because none of these cells can be either a four or another two. One of them already is a two relating to the one. So we don't have any ones, twos, or threes here, or sevens, obviously. Now, that means they're from four, five, six, eight, and nine. Now, you can't have eight and nine here because that would put two high digits here Oh no, that, that's enough. 
Oh, hang on, that's very interesting. Look, four, five, and six, none of these can be middly. Ah. Now, can, he, can any of these be three? We've, yeah, none of these can be middly, and they can't be one either. So, one of them we know is low, it's a two. We've either got two lows, two, three, and a high, or a low and two highs. Now, if any of these are high, oh, we could have six here. We could have a seven there and a six here. If both of these were high, they would have to be nine and eight to let those have a six. If they were nine and eight, that would be matched by nine and eight down here, and then C would have to be middly. And that would be very informative. This is quite complicated. So if nine and eight were here, C would be middly. However, this could be two, three, and high. In which case, these are one, four, and, well, either high or six. And that is a bit less informative, unfortunately. Ah, I feel, I mean, it's definitely interesting that none of these are middly. Where's five? Somewhere here. Yeah, none of them are middly. Where does six? Well, six is probably in one of those, but it could be in one of those. Could I rule three out of those cells? I don't think so. Right, maybe I can rule three out of one of these. If four is in one of these, that's fixing this as a two and that as a three. Hmm, three would have to be in one of, ah. Oh, if three was here with four below it, because of that three and four, they'd have to be in these specific cells. And then you'd end up with another three Ah, yes, yes, I don't think it works. Excellent. <coughs> okay, I think this is right, but the only way you could have another low digit here is if it's a three. That's gonna have to be three and four in these two cells. Now, if you had that, think about threes. You've got a four here, which is putting two here. Ah, oh, and three there, no, it does work. I was wondering where three would go in box eight, but it ends up here. I was thinking it was eliminated and I'm wrong. Maybe we have to think about it the other way round. There is a three in one of these cells. Maybe it has to be up here. If three is in one of those two, that's a two, that's a two. No, maybe that is not the point at which we make a decision. I thought I'd got it, and I haven't. Um, let's just do something very uninteresting, like putting a six in one of those cells. Oh, here we go. Look, there's three Bs up here, and they can't be two or three or six. Sorry. There we go. Got it in the end. B must be high. Why have... I not used I just don't think I've seen that before. If I did notice that earlier and didn't use it. No, I noticed the one, two, three triple here, the lows. I didn't notice the three Bs. There we go, three Bs. They're all high because they don't include six or two and three. So B is the high digit. Right, let's let's mark them all as seven, eight, nine, and then just see where we go from there. This is a five, that's a four. 
One of these is a five. This is a four five pair. Um, this is struggling to be a four. No, it's not. It's fine to be a four. In fact, whether it is three or four, this is, or even seven or eight, this is definitely high. Because this can't go three, four. This is definitely a high digit. That's interesting. Now, we've got a seven there, so those can't have a seven in. These C, let's do the C marking as well, because C is now the middly digit. So these are a four, five pair. That is a five, six pair in box seven. That is a six because it has four and five in its box. So one of those is now a six. That is a six, seven pair. That's not a seven. The seven in column seven is at the top. This C is five or six. Right, now this six, seven pair, this is surely telling me something. It's not really telling me whether these include a three or an eight, nine pair. That's strange. Uh, but we are making definite progress now. So let's just see with this pair. Can't include one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're both high and they include an eight. And that can't be eight. That can't be eight. Two, six, one, seven, eight, nine. That is four or five. It has to be five. So that sorts out four and five. That makes this one a six. That puts five down here. Across the bottom row, I can do six and four. Go round the flask and get a five there. Have I managed to use the word flask? Not yet. Maybe I did at the beginning. Maybe I used beaker. I don't know. I'm very confused about what chemistry terms are what, what vessels are described. By which names? Right, 21675. There's a four there. We've got a three to put in somewhere in that row. Now, do we know more about this? Ah, we've got a high digit here. So we can only have one high digit <clears throat> and no six in this group. Yes, that'll do. This will do it. Now we know we must need a three here, because if this was two eight nine, which is the other possibility, we would need to put two high digits here, and we've already got two in the row. So this is two three and a high digit. So one of them is a three. That's what we've learned. We have worked out before that that has to be in this cell to have a four beneath it. So there we go, because of this three and four. So now we can put, now that four, yes, that four does the black dot, that black dot does the white dot. Now we can stick a three here. This pair are from one, eight, and nine. This pair are from two, eight, and nine. And this one is high. <laughs> I don't think I can tell more. However, even that's quite useful because we've got the three highs in this column now. And in this box. So that is a three, four pair, definitely. And in fact, we've got a four down here to disambiguate them. This is eight or nine. One of these is a three, I can't tell which. One of these is an eight or nine, and the other, okay, we've got two, three, one, six, seven, four there. So a five, eight, nine, triple, must be a two, three, six, triple on the right. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one of these is a six. Um, one of, that's five in this box. This is high. Six, three. Oh, the six is looking at the central cell. Is 
Now, if that's a 1-2 pair, this is a 5-8-9 triple. But if it's an 8-9 pair, this goes 2-1-5. That can't be a 2, can it? Yeah, if this was an 8-9 pair, this has no fill. This can't be a 2, because that can't be a 1 or a 3. So that is not an 8-9 pair. That's the 2-1 pair. Let's tidy that stuff up. 8-9 pair there. That's a 1. And that one isn't. Okay. Now, this is a 5-8-9 triple, which is a bit less determinable. Oh no, that's quite interesting. Since 8 and 9 are used there, that has to be an 8 touching a 7. And anyway, we fixed the 2 in the in the in box 2. That's how we did that. 9 goes there. We've got a 3 or a 6 in the corner. And then we've got a 3 in that corner. That's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spot. Light losing its religion. Okay, so we're going along nicely now. 3152, we need a 4 there. We need a 6 there. 7, don't know. 3, 4, let's look down the first column. We've got lots of 7, 8, 9s to do in the puzzle in general. Uh, we must be able to... Oh, no, we've got one pair of fives left. That's surprising. This is seven, eight, or nine. So that's the last three. Yeah, it's all seven, eights, or nines, apart from the one remaining five. That's quite strange. Now, come on, there's there's some way to um, to sort out these remaining digits, I'm sure. That can't be seven. So the seven in box eight, there it is. That gives us a 9 in the corner. That makes this white dot 8 and 7. And I think that is going to do it and get us home and over the finish line and complete our chemical laboratory work. 8 and 9 are looking at that cell, which is 7. It's lovely. I mean, it's, as always, from Sumanta. It's a beautiful flow to the puzzle. Elegant stuff throughout. And... Uh, a very satisfying conclusion, I think. Great. Really nice to do a nice, clean puzzle today. And frankly, um, I get a better result from a chemistry experiment than I ever got in real life. Chemistry was amongst my weak points, and it's a mystery to me that my children are much better at science than I was disappointment. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, as always. Um, Please give some compliments to Samantha in the comments because he deserves them. That's an excellent puzzle. And hope to see you again on the channel tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.